What is going on, Dolphins fans? Welcome to the Fins Up Network. It's Ben Morgan. And typically around this time, I'd be releasing my, my weekly stock up, stock down video. But with the, the more timely, urgent, pressing news of, of Tua and Bridgewater and concussion protocol and whatnot, this video will likely take place of my weekly stock up, stock down uh, video that I typically put out around this time of the week. But hey, if you're feeling so inclined, go ahead, send your stock up, stock down candidates, put them in the comments. I still would love to read those. But like I said, there's more pressing news today, and I've got a lot of thoughts on the entire situation that I would like to get to. Um, but I do want to I do want to say one thing before I get started, because my thoughts, it's it's going to be weird to say. I'd almost rather have a guest for this, because it's, it's kind of hard to stay on topic when there's so much... There's information out there. There's thoughts out there. There's Twitter doctors out there. There's apparent professionals out there. There's so many opinions that it's almost hard to figure out what to keep straight, where your where your thoughts should align. Because let's just do, I don't mean to throw a stray at a guy like Kenny Pickett, but we're not analyzing Kenny Pickett's concussions the way we are to us right now. Because we just like, oh, Kenny Pickett, you've had a couple of concussions. Here's a, here's a space helmet. Go out there and, and have fun. Lead us to a victory for the Steelers. It's different with Tua. The, the optics are terrible. It happened against the Bengals on prime time. Then you get the whole back-to-back -back stuff with that in the Bills game. So optically, Tua was the one guy the NFL didn't want to get these head injuries from. So you're getting an array of theories, of, of topics, of opinions that some are warranted, some aren't warranted. So I want to say, if there's anything that may come off as anti-Tua in this video, I don't mean that. I'm not anti-Tua. That's not me whatsoever. If those that know me, those that have been with the Fins Up Network from day one, you know Tua is my guy. I am ride or die with this guy for however long he is the Miami Dolphins quarterback. I am with this guy. Nothing changes that. But like I said, I have some topics. I have some thoughts that I don't want to get construed in the wrong way. So let's start by saying right away. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Tua's health is the primary concern here. Whatever he wants to do, however long he wants to be out, the fact that he was able to talk to the doctors, that's great. His health is the primary concern. I don't want to have that be overlooked whatsoever because you know that's not my intentions here. But we're at the Fins Up Network, I want to talk about on-field stuff as well. I want to talk about the team, and obviously that includes more than just one player's safety and injury concerns. So as you know, he's back in the concussion protocol second time this season, meaning what? Teddy Bridgewater gets most of your first team reps, prepares the start in case Tua doesn't get activated from concussion pro protocol. I just listened to Cameron Wolf on NFL Network. Remains in protocol. Most likely, Teddy Bridgewater is going to be our guy week 17 in that all-important game against the, the New England Patriots. Because, yes, Tua's injury concern and health is number one. But, man, at the end of the day, the on-field stuff, like I said, I'm, I'm going to play both sides of the fence here. What an important-ass game. So. That's great. That's, let's talk about that because with Tua being in the protocol doesn't necessarily mean he had a concussion. So I want, Like I said, I want to start with that. In Pierce, we all know when it happened at this point in time. Late second quarter, he gets tackled from behind on that dump off to Smythe. Kind of falls awkwardly, bangs the back of his head on the ground. Now, based on everything we've read, we've heard so far, Tua didn't necessarily begin having the symptoms at that point in time. But let's take a pause from the timeline for a second. And bring up this point. Earlier in the season, Teddy Bridgewater hits his head on the turf against the Jets. He's yanked from the game instantly by the spotter. He's put into protocol. He doesn't get to come back in the game. He has to essentially spend that entire week in concussion protocol. Where was that spotter on this play? So like I said, yeah, Tua may not have shown the obvious signs after this play, but the force alone that his head makes with the ground should have flagged the spotter. Now, I don't want to talk too much about that. That is an NFL player safety issue. I'm not qualified to talk about that. That's for another, that's for another debate. That's for other people. But let's get back to that timeline because it sounds like Tua didn't have the symptoms on Sunday. It happened on Monday, and he notified the team at that point in time, which obviously re results going into concussion protocol. So that sparks two thoughts for me. The timing alone sparks two thoughts for me. One, good on Tua for not hiding the symptoms, letting the doctors know. Like I said, health comes first. But two, the symptoms must have been bad enough to trigger that thought process. Because think about this. 
this isn't a high school kid just being like, oh man, I got a, I got a headache or I'm a little bit dizzy here. The guys in the NFL, they put, they dedicate a lot of their life to this. The amount of time practicing, mentally preparing, strength training, everything that goes into playing in the NFL. We're talking about the 1% of the 1%. These dudes are warriors, for lack of a better term. For him to straight up say, when we've heard other quarterbacks say, I don't remember playing in some halves of games, like and not talk, telling team doctors about that until years later. For him to say that, there must have been something going on. Because like I said, we're talking about warriors who typically try to fight through everything. And this whole idea could be a little bit alarming because of how this may impact future on-field performance. Now, what do I mean by this? Because I'm not talking, I'm not talking as a social media doctor who's saying retirement or anything drastic like that. I'm not qualified to talk about anything like that. Social media is the definition of toxicity right now. You want to go to a dark place, log on to Twitter. I would suggest paying close attention to who you're listening to, who you're following, because right now is not a good place because everyone has an opinion. Everyone is running with wild speculation. So be careful with that right now. But what it tells me is, though, is that these potential concussions and the issues that come along with them may, in fact, be part of who Tua is now on the field and off the field. And honestly, how couldn't they be? I don't blame Tua at all. Look at everything that's new for him. Look at everything he's gone through the last year. Just got married. Just has a new, just had a new kid. He's 24 years old. So yeah, he's got a long football career ahead of him if he chooses to do so. But guess what's longer the rest of his life? He's got a lot of his life to, to live. But like I said, I want to bring this back to football. Let's say he clears protocol at some point this year, next year, whenever. I don't want to get into that speculation game, either in regards to his return. But these concussion issues can and maybe will impact performance. Now, I'm not talking, I'm not making excuses. I'm not talking about the second half of a Christmas Day game against the Packers where after the after the the injury that wasn't really diagnosed on the field, where the stats went to hell. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about brain injuries impacting his ability to throw the ball. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that a player that's gone through what Tua has gone through this year may in, pa- in fact play with a different mindset. That's just the nature of it. That's the, the top. That's the, that's the, that's the nature. As, like I said, I think I said it right the first time. That's the nature of the issue. And a hot topic right now, even before the concussion issue, was maybe Tua is not more than a one-read quarterback. Now, is that because the, the offensive scheme doesn't want him to be? Is that because he simply doesn't? possess that tool in the tool drawer. Now, once again, that topic is for a completely different discussion, a different video. But what I'm saying is that Tua has been playing through numerous injuries. He's played through terrible offensive line play his entire time in the NFL leading up to this year. So he has probably developed some habits of hitting that first read, of getting the ball out of his hand fast. And that simply just might be the type of quarterback that he is now and that he will be moving forward. And in my opinion, that's going to be a lot to overcome moving forward. If the team wants him to evolve from there, if he wants to evolve from there into being a multiple read quarterback, more of an off script type passer versus just here's my read. This is where I'm going. And now I'm I'm not saying that he can't do it, but when he comes out of college and we think the worst, the worst thing that can happen is another hip injury. The the hip is the worst. If he can overcome that, he's fine. Well, let me tell you what, these brain injuries, these concussion injuries, they completely dwarf anything that we ever imagined with the hip. So now we got to talk about the Miami Dolphins as a team, because we're talking about a team that may be continuing to build around a quarterback that has numerous injury concerns and an injury history, the head, the hip, the ankle, the finger, the rib. And now we may be playing more of in a style that makes him a bit gun shy. Now, that can go a few different ways. One, it may completely limit him. It may prevent him from reaching that full potential that we all know and think that is there. Two, it may keep him at the starter quality level that he's at right now, but maybe limiting him from that full potential from when we originally drafted him, coming out of Alabama. Or three, he may just simply prove to be mentally strong enough. He's done it in the past. He overcame all the Flores shit. He came over all the Deshaun Watson issues. He may be able to block out those injuries. It may have no impact whatsoever on his mental, on his on-field performance. 
Now, this is a weird comparison, but stay with me. Look at Tom Brady. The guy has played football forever at a very high level. He does it all sorts of ways. He hits first reads. He hits second reads. He makes off-script plays. But yet, he's never getting hurt. The only time that he has missed any meaningful time is when it's an outlier situation. Dude rolled up on his leg. He tears his ACL, whatever it was. Besides that, he has played at a Hall of Fame level while mastering the quarterback position and never seeming to take a big hit. Now, does Tua have those capabilities? Does he have the mindset? Does he have the talent to be able to mirror that style? Well, what I can tell you is that Tom Brady didn't begin his NFL career the way that Tua Tungavailoa did. He didn't have these injuries. He didn't have these injury concerns. He didn't have terrible offensive line play for his first two years. So it may have never crept into the head of a guy like Tom Brady that, I, hey, I need to adapt the way that I play. Because I think at this point in time, it might be running through to his head that, hey, if I keep playing, I'm going to have to adapt how I play. So like I said, this is basically a long way of me saying that, yeah, I, I want Tua to be the Dolphins quarterback. I go back to that draft. I wanted him over Burrow. I wanted him over Justin Herbert. I love what he's done so far. In year one of Mike McDaniel's offense, I love what he's done. I am beyond excited to see how it evolves from here over the next few years. But like I said, my head is kind of spinning right now because it's hard not to be worried about, about Tua's health. And now you got to factor in how does this team look with or without Tua moving forward? Because right now we have a lot of questions, not only about Tua, but the playoff run this year. We were eight and three. We're eight and six. We're still in the thick of things. Dropped the video yesterday about all the playoff opportunities that are still there. We still have a 67% chance of making the playoffs. So how do we navigate the rest of the season with or without Tua? And then what do we do moving forward in the next few years? So a lot of things to consider. But at the end of the day, I should have just started with this. It's Tua's call. Retirement, sit out a couple of weeks, come back this week if he passes protocol. This is his decision. It's not Emmanuel Acho's on, on Twitter or whatever show he is on. It's not Twitter doctor guy's opinion as well, just because he saw Tua's head hit the floor a couple of times. It's no one's decision. It's going to be Tua consulting with team doctors, with external doctors, with his family, with the new wife, with, I mean, he's not, he can talk to his kid. The kid's not going to answer him back. However, but he's going to factor all that in. And at the end of the day, it's going to be Tua's decision. So we're talking a lot about nothing. And like I said, I would, I would, I would urge you and advise you just pay attention to those who you're, that you're following. And at the end of the day, just keep in mind that this, the season is almost kind of, of set us up to learn how to navigate this to a situation, because what, what do we do? Three and oh, or one, three in a row, lost three in a row, one five in a row, lost four in a row, whatever it was. It's been a roller coaster of emotions. And now we're on a roller coaster that involves Tua Tonga Wailoa. So it's almost like it kind of trained us to just get ready for this roller coaster. So what, what can you do? You strap on and you see what the hell Tua wants to do with his decision. So I'll leave you with that. I will be back later in the week. More preview videos for the New England Patriots. Like I said, it's looking like Teddy Bridgewater uh, based on everything we've seen so far. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. But that is my extended time for today, Miami Dolphins fans. And until next time, fins up.